Pretty much everyone who has a Google Home Mini or a Google Nest Hub knows that you can get customized responses out of it by using the voice match feature. But did you know that if you enter in some details about the people around your life, well, you can get even further customized. When you head into the Google Assistant settings and then you find the section all about you, you'll find another setting called your people and you can start to enter in some basic information about who's in your life. From there, you'll be able to include terms like grandfather or son or daughter in all of your different commands as you work with the Google Assistant. And one of the easiest things or maybe the best things you want to do at that point is whenever you're feeling down, just ask to call mama. Now, I love taking features like that a little bit further than the average person, and we can do that with the Your People section. See, one of the things I really like to do is identify my friends, and then we all have nicknames for our friends, especially if we've played on sports teams. And if you add in a nickname, plus you add in something like their home address, well then it's very easy to ask about the traffic on the way to Sneaky Pete's home. And the other thing I like to do is to make sure that it's just a couple of taps to get to these people because I'm calling them very often or I want to ask them something right away. And to do that, you know what, the Google Nest Hub with its smart display capability, it has the household contacts feature. So you can actually set someone as a household contact and that will mean that they show up on the smart display as a quick ring. And if they use Duo, well that means you're going to get the ability to video call them right on these devices immediately. Now, I don't know about you, but I like my Google Assistant to have a strong female English accent and to call me big boy. But seriously, you can change the way the Google Assistant sounds and you can go between a number of choices, but if you're only seeing a couple of choices, well, then change your language or, or at least your first language to English United States. And when you do that, you're gonna see a number of new options show up when you're speaking to it in that language. And getting the Google Assistant to actually call me inappropriate things isn't just sport. I can actually do that by setting a nickname. And if I wanna go all the way here, well, then I put in my birthday there and I can get a happy birthday big boy from the Google Assistant. Okay, I'll leave that joke alone for now. I have a pretty complex online life, as you might imagine with what I do for a living, but it goes further than that. I'm not just using Google accounts for business, I have personal things. Now, what happens as a result of that is I have email all over the place, I have calendars with different appointments, and I might even be getting invites to meetings on those different accounts. One of the ways that I've wanted to be able to customize my Google Home was to start putting different accounts on different Google Homes so I could find out what was going on throughout my day in the different parts of my life. But that's honestly too complicated and Google figured this out recently. So what they did is they gave you the ability to add in additional Google Home accounts for one single user. And when you do that, not only will you be able to check the calendars across all of those accounts, but you're also able to join your different Google Meet video meetings across all of them. Despite having this fairly complicated online life, personally, outside of the online world, I'm pretty simple and I'm kind of a creature of habit and what that means is in a lot of cases I'm going to go to my favorite grocery store before I go try something else and honestly I'm going to have the same pizza over and over and over again instead of trying that new place on the block. What this means though is that I have this opportunity to create some customized responses and when I go into the your places side of the application, well then I can add in these other places. It doesn't just need to be home and work anymore. I've added in the best grocery store and obviously the best pizza place around. Now, if I ask the Google Home Mini for directions, I can get directions sent to my phone and I can ask for those places by the names that I've set in the application. So very simple to ask to go to the best grocery store, get the traffic and the navigation to that kind of a place. Obviously the navigation is not a big help, but it's customizing for the traffic at the time if it's a bit of a drive for you.
Now, this feature goes much deeper, and one of the things that you can use to customize the routes you get on your phone or even on the smart displays is to change how you travel. Now, it's a little bit different between how you go from home to work and back, but you can make a choice for each of those situations. The other thing is that the Your People section allows you to do the same thing with their locations. You can get navigation and traffic on the way there. As we go through the video today, one thing you're gonna be noticing is that there's a lot of different ideas here. And actually, I put 95 of these ideas into an ebook, and the link is down below. Very inexpensive, and you'll be supporting the channel as you get more ideas for how to use your Google Home. One of the best ways to customize how you work with the Google Home is to create custom lists. And a lot of people know that you can now go create custom lists and attach it to different things like Google Keep at this point. But to be honest, one of the most useful things is one of the earliest features that we had, which was the shopping list. Now, unfortunately, what happens to me is as soon as I leave my home, it's like my brain leaves my head and I totally forget to check that shopping list. So what ends up inevitably happening to me is I end up in my best grocery store and then I forget that I need milk and I just walk around aimlessly picking out ingredients for cookies or to bake cookies and I totally forget everything I've put on that shopping list. Well, this is where connecting the Google Assistant to your phone and these devices allows you to remember that. And that's done by creating a reminder on your Google Home Mini. Just ask it to create a reminder when I get to the best grocery store. And then when you get there, the location will trigger and you get a little reminder on your phone. Something that voice assistants haven't done really well to date, really, is to narrow down the information. You know, as you make these general requests, well, you're going to get general information back. But sometimes I want something that's a little more specific to me. And as you watch this video, well, just understand that this is going to get better and better because Google is making some serious headway here. I eat gluten-free and I have to. I'm allergic to gluten and have been for most of my life. So I was always initially very wary about bringing up recipes on smart displays or asking the Google Home Mini to send me one to my phone. Well, now I can actually set that as a food preference and those are the types of recipes that I will get back. And we have the ability to ask for the news and we can customize the news feed within our Google Home application. And that allows you to get your little news flash and just hear the different stories that you would like to hear. But I have a couple of rabbit holes for you to head down. And the first one is assistant.google.com. And these are called actions. And when you head to this site, you can actually start to search a little better because that news feed tends to be difficult to kind of walk through and pick from all the services. So instead, go to assistant.google.com and you can send a specific action to any of your Google Home or Google Nest Hub devices. Here is the latest news from CBC News. But something that's become more and more prominent in my life, and I think it's going to become more prominent in your life, is around podcasts. And we can now, instead of going into the Google Home app, where it's really hard to kind of figure out what podcasts you want to watch, at least it is today, you can actually head to podcasts.google.com. And as long as you are signed into the Google account that you're using with these devices, well, then you're going to be able to hit that subscribe button and you can use, again, another Google search bar to get to the podcast that you'd really like. Now, what's really great about this, from my perspective, is on a smart display, those are the ones that start to show up on that device and you can just watch or listen to what you want. And to further this, well, you can customize the media that shows up within the news segment on those smart displays and really across your Google services in general. See, when you head into the stocks page today, you're gonna see the stocks that you follow and Google may or may not have figured out that you wanna follow certain ones. You gotta actually do that at finance.google.com. But once you go up to the top, you can actually click the drop down. And when you do that, you're gonna see the ability to 
choose certain topics that are important to you and those are going to show up more and more on your news feed and as you request specific information throughout your day. One of the things that's different for all of us is how many people are in our household, what age they are, and you know what, Google has kind of started to put the pieces together at a high enough level for me to talk to you about Family Link. Now you can head to families.google.com or you can add people or invite people through the Google Home app to manage your home. But really the Family Link application or that website is the best way to manage things. And what happens at that point is you gain the ability for all of these different things that we've talked about for other people in your home. One of the things I like to do is to remind my kid and he's not quite old enough to have a smartphone but I think many of you have kids at that age. Now one of the really interesting ways that I think I will use this when we get to that point is that I can set a reminder for that individual. Now on top of that I can when it's asking when again use a location. Now you can't use your places or their places that they've set up in the app. That's not possible right now, but you can actually say an address and when they get there with that smartphone, you can remind them to actually drink some water at school. I don't know the number of times I have forgotten how to say something properly to these Google devices and that has caused a lot of frustration for me and once in a while it causes me to stop using them and they're really fantastic. So. I want to use them. Plus, I find myself wanting to get little custom responses back based on things that I might say on a regular basis. And I mean, I think about wanting to get little dad jokes back and kind of bothering my kid. Well, that's been pretty fun. Now, there's actually a number of those on a thread we have over on our Facebook group. You can check out the link down below for that. And this is one of the really nice things about routines because you can actually kind of create a shortcut or a number of shortcuts because it doesn't just have to be one single command that you give that can execute really long, customized, complex commands that you would normally have to really think through. But this is one of the ways that you don't have to remember exactly how to say something and you kind of customize the response. So earlier in the video, I talked about the fact that Google's giving us better and better options for customizing our interests. And as they do better with that, I will show that on the channel in the video that's up on screen. See, we go through a number of new features, new capabilities with your Google Home devices every few weeks here on the channel. And this is how you can keep up with all of the great things you can do there. So go check out the video that is up on screen. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.